Sometimes ghosts live in your head. They rattle around, moving things from one side of your brain to the other, or appearing from the shadows at the least expected times. Allison? Mom's voice comes from the phone. My eyes are fixed on my reflection, a headset on my ear, as audience members stare at me from the other side of the glass. My eyes refocus and I see myself, Allison bullshit, dressed in black as if waiting for a funeral. Did you hear me? Mom talks louder like we have a bad connection. Jude is dead. I have to swallow down the dryness in my mouth. Yeah. I've been trying to get a hold of you for a few days, but you never answer the phone. I let guilt wash over me, but I don't say a word. I just twist the phone cord around my finger. <coughs> Mom breaks the silence. They found her in old Emma's barn. Well, they found Emma first. Neighbors saw her car sitting in the driveway for a while with leaves all over it. Not like Emma, you know. So they called the police to check on her because, God forbid, anyone would knock on Emma's door without the police. Anyway, you wouldn't believe the smell? Smell? I stopped Mom's monologue. What? When did Jude die? No, not Jude, honey. Emma. Emma smelled. Jude died, what, 20-some years ago? When you were running around with her. I blush when Mom says, running around with her. So wait, I try to sort my thoughts. Emma died. Yes. Mom sounds frustrated, but then she softens her voice. Honey, I'm sorry. They found Jude there in Emma's barn, but Jude died years ago. It's because Emma died that they found her. Jesus, thousand-year-old Emma just died? And Jude? Of all the places I imagined Jude to go, Emma's barn was not on the list. I feel Jude's breath on my ear. I'm going to get the fuck out of this town, Allie. Go to New Orleans or New York or San Francisco. Some place I can disappear. Her syllables pop on my eardrum. Mom interrupts my thought. I helped them figure out who she was. What? I'm only half listening. Did Mom say she helped them? A couple officers, officers were at the restaurant the other day telling me about it, how they found the skeleton in old Emma's barn. They said the skeleton looked like a young girl, but she'd been dead a long time. I told them, I said, my daughter, she used to run around with Emma's relative back in high school. And so they asked me all sorts of questions about Jude. I told them her name. So wait, I pull the headset off my ear and look around at the crowds walking past the box office, smiling at me through the glass. They don't know for sure that it's Jude. I feel hopeful. Oh no, it's Jude. They got her dental records. Matt and Ben, they told me today. Matt and Ben? I take a deep breath. Who? The officers that always come in, they told me. Mom, I really wish my mother could speak in complete thoughts. I try to lead her into a normal way of communicating, even though my heart is thumping in my chest and the lump in my throat is growing. Mom's been better at speaking her thoughts since Dad died, but I still have to coax the facts out of her from time to time. They told you that it was Jude. You're sure it was Jude they found in old Emma's barn? Yes, honey, I told you. I was the one that gave them her name. I understand, Mom, but I really don't. Mom, I just want to make sure that it actually is Jude. <coughs> oh, yeah, it's Jude. Those people, the one that do the autopsies, like them people on TV, they figured it out from the dental records. You haven't returned my calls, but I thought you'd want to know. I look down at the phone cord twisted around my finger. It's wrapped so tight that the tip of my finger is bright red. They want to talk to you. My mom quickly grows tired of the silence. Who? Matt and Ben. They want to ask you some questions. <laughs> Me? Oh, God. What if they ask about the last time I saw her? I squeeze my eyes shut as if that will take away the image of Jude walking away from me, her shoulders slumped. Jesus, why was I so scared? No, there was nothing else I could do, nothing else I could say. Mom continues. They want to know if you know anyone. Know anyone? Anyone who, what, who murdered her? No, honey. Mom lets out a little nervous laugh. If you know any relatives, she killed herself. Killed herself. 
I tried to pull my finger out of the twisted phone cord. She practically shot her head off. I massaged my eyes, eyebrows, and forehead to try to get those words out of my head. Through the headset, the house manager asked if we're ready for the 10 minute warning. Mom, I have to get back to work. I'll call you tomorrow. I hang up, happy I had some way to get back into my life again. I move up the stairs, through the green room, don't look at the stunned actors, through the darkness of the wings. I get to my seat just in time. I put my headset on and don't even have time to look over the prompt script. I know this show back and forth, but I feel like I'm looking at a foreign language. Warning lights 86 through 89. I take a deep breath and try to focus. Standby lights 90 through 94. The stage is dark. Actors stand in the wings, listening for their cues. As I wait for the music to fade out, I mouth the words, she killed herself. I try to take the words in. Of course she killed herself. Who was I kidding all these years thinking she'd just run away? I used to look for her face when I traveled, New Orleans, San Francisco, New York, but there she was all this time in Emma's barn. She probably just plopped down on the dirt floor, resigned, ready. Where did she get the gun? Knowing Jude, she was probably determined when she put the barrel in her mouth and pulled the trigger. She did it quick. She didn't cry. A shiver runs through me. The music stops. I blink my eyes at the page under the white light in front of me and my left eye waters. Go lights 86 and 87, I say quickly as I wipe the drip from my eye. A, lightly slow, a light slowly comes up on stage right. Two actors are set on stage as Jessie, the lead actress, enters up stage right. I wonder if Emma had ever walked out to the barn and found Jude, maybe when she went to feed the cats or something. Go lights 88, Emma must have seen Jude at some point. Wouldn't she have at least smelled that kind of death? But Emma never would have called the police. She would have been too afraid of losing everything she had, too afraid of people thinking she was somehow involved. So she probably just walked past the body day after day, and then she walked past the skeleton, frozen in time, wearing bell bottoms and high top sneakers. Allie, Jeff the lighting guy whispers into the headset. Then he says, go lights 90, stand by lights 91 as if he's repeating something I've just said. The lights come up on Jesse, standing stage left, already a few sentences into talking to another actor. The lights slowly rise on her. Jesus, she is not happy. I can tell by the tension in her hands. Okay, I really have to get back into this show. Go lights, 91. The lights dim stage left, and I'm back in control, at least for now.